friends, welcome back. Since V-Day is right around the corner, I thought I'd share some of my favorite classic romantic films. With a bit of a twist, they have to either star black performers or have a performance by some of my favorite classic black stars. So I'm pretty excited about this. <laughs> I know there's probably a lot of folks out there that love a good tearjerker when it comes to their romance movies, but I'm just gonna let you know right now, I am not among those folks. <laughs> I'm a happy endings kind of gal. All right, let's get started. The first film I shall regale you with is called The Duke is Tops, and it came out in 1938, and it stars Ralph Cooper and Lena Horn. I love her. In this one, Cooper plays a promoter who's in love with Lena, who plays a singer in his stable of talent that he promotes. FYI, they call her the Bronze Venus, in this movie which is completely fitting <laughs> also it's the name that the movie was re-released under in 1943 so cooper is strictly small potatoes in the promoting world but you know he's got big dreams meanwhile lena's got a big time promoter after her that is chomping at the bit to make her famous now lena loves duke and so she refuses the offer but Duke, you know, obviously he loves her, wants her to be a star. He does some shady business that makes Lena rethink her loyalty and quit. The rest of the story is basically a quest for love and stardom. <laughs> Although this is a low budget film, mostly made for black audiences, I think it's a wonderful B movie and I love the cast and production team were almost all black. Plus the music is great and it's the first film in which Lena was given top billing. So it's definitely worth a watch. All right, the next one on the list is called Sepia Cinderella. And that one came out in 1947. If you follow my Insta, you know I love this movie. <laughs> it's fabulous. It stars Billy Daniels and Sheila Guys, but there's also a ton of guest appearances like Freddie Bartholomew, who was a former child star, he plays himself, exotic dancer, Tonda Leo, and Sidney Poitier, who is in an uncredited role. Also, the dancing is awesome. Moving on. In this one, Sheila's in love with a completely clueless Billy, who plays a band leader. Sheila helps Billy write the title song, Sepia Cinderella, and the song's a big hit, which causes Billy to leave the small time club he's performing in and transition to a big time nightclub, where a sneaky female club owner tries to win Billy's heart, even though she already got a man. Will Billy go off with this woman? Will success ruin Billy's chance of true love with Sheila? Guess you'll just have to watch it and find out. <laughs> All right, the next one I'm gonna tell you about is called Orchestra Wives. And that one came out in 1942. It stars George Montgomery, Anne Rutherford, Lynn Berry, Cesar Romero and Marion Hutton. Where are the black folks, you ask? There, there, my darlings. <laughs> you will get treated to some fabulous dancing by the Nicholas Brothers. Bayard and Harold were famed dancers, and your whole entire eyeballs will be thrilled. I'm just telling you. All right, so this one's about a traveling swing band that plays in Anne's podunk little town and she falls in love with the trumpeter who's played by George. She marries him because the band is leaving town and I guess, why not? <laughs> not much else to do in her town anyway. <laughs> so she goes traveling with him and the band and their wives. The wives are horrible catty creatures who infuriate Anne. Also, the female singer in the band starts trying to put the moves on Anne's man. Obviously, Anne ain't having it, so she leaves George. What is George to do? Will he succumb to the wicked charms of the femme fatale singer? Will he go chase after Anne to try and win her back? Will this affect the band? Guess uh, you're just gonna have to watch and find out. <laughs> the next film on the list is called Sun Valley Serenade, and that one also came out in 1942. It stars Sonia Henney, John Payne, Glenn Miller, Milton Berle, and Lynn Berry. It's obviously got the Glenn Miller Orchestra in there, as well as dancing by the Nicholas Brothers, 
Mm -hmm. Again, because once you see orchestra wives, you will be dying for another hit of their amazing talent. It also features Miss Dorothy Dandridge singing Chattanooga Choo Choo, which was nominated for an Oscar for Best Song, inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 1996, and was awarded the first gold record for sales of 1.2 million. Hmm. So this one is about a pianist in a band played by John Payne, whose publicist thinks it would be a super great idea if the entire band adopts a foreign refugee child. Premise is a bit ridiculous, I will admit. Also, not even sure it's legal. <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> anyway, so they go pick up this kid from Ellis Island, but it turns out there is no kid. Rather, they find a young woman there played by Sonia Henney. So they're stuck with her and they end up taking her on a band gig where Sonia tries her darndest to try and charm the socks off of John. John's girlfriend, played by Lynn Berry, is decidedly not charmed, and she quits the band. What will the band do? They must have a singer! <laughs> also, who will John end up with? Is his romance with Lynn doomed? Do we want it to be? Watch this movie and all of your questions will be answered. <laughs> the last film on the list is called That Certain Feeling, and that one came out in 1956. It stars Bob Hope, Eva Marie Saint, and George Sanders. The cast also features Pearl Bailey. She plays a singing maid and sings two numbers, so you'll get a lovely treat there. It's also got a young Jerry Mathers from Leave it to Beaver. This is a Bob Hope movie, and if you've ever watched his films, you know that there's always a lot going on. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, is this just one movie? Or do they string like eight together? I'm confused. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just going to focus on the romance part of this film. So Eve Marie Saint plays a gorgeous, sophisticated woman from New York who goes by the name Dunreath Henry. It's a mouthful. <laughs> She's the private secretary to the wealthy and famed cartoonist Larry Larkin, who is played by George Sanders, and also happens to be his fiance. She was not always such a polished and sophisticated woman, though. Back in the day, she lived in Michigan as Ethel Jankowski and was married to another famed but neurotic cartoonist, played by Bob Hope, obviously. <laughs> One day, Eva's man gets complaints about his comic strip being less funny than it used to be, so Eva hires Bob to be her fiancé's ghostwriter. His comics are a hit, and Eva starts feeling some kind of way about Bob, but, you know, she's got a fiance. <laughs> she's living the high life as a New York City gal. So is she going to be willing to give all that up for her crazy ex-husband? Guess we'll just have to watch it and find out. <laughs> and we're done, friends. If you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. I've got so much to share with you in the weeks to come. We're going to talk about jazz, all black cast films and production houses, old Hollywood stars and their black besties, 70s kung fu. Yeah, I got a lot planned for you. So I hope I see you the Friday after next.